video number three. That is, I have divided here till now the lesson into this third part. The third part of the lesson is going on right now. Previously, in this lesson, you must have seen two videos. So this is the third one. Let us first have a quick recap of the past two videos related to this lesson. So previously we had seen that there was an author of the lesson, Michael Montago, and he went to buy in a junk shop a roll-top desk. That roll-top desk was in a very bad condition and he tried to mend and repair it somehow on the Christmas Eve. Then he while repairing he found one letter. Out of curiosity, he read that letter. And what was written in that letter? That letter was written by one Jim McPherson to his wife, Connie McPherson. In this letter, Jim had written that as Jim, he himself, he belonged to English England Army. Then, opposite side, there was German Army. So war was going on and he was an officer there. So in this letter we had shared the details of Christmas celebrations with the enemy king. That how enemy king came up. They did, first they came to celebrate Christmas with uh, this England team. Jim McPherson's team. So they both had celebrated Christmas very nicely. They longed to be with each other. They spent the time, hours and hours of time with each other. They liked it so much. They didn't want to depart. So he has to say that nobody wants what? Children are orphaned. Wives are widowed. So what should be decided with the help of some match or some game? Our differences, our conflict should be resolved. So, war should not happen. We should all pray for peace. So, let me start the explanation of my third video related to this lesson where we left last time. That night, back in our dugouts, dugouts, dugouts means that where land is dark blue, for the soldiers, they can fight and they cannot be easily seen to anybody. So, dugout means a shelter for soldiers. A shelter for soldiers. Where the soldiers can live, stay safely. It is like a hole in the ground. As a hole in the ground. Then we heard they, they were singing a carol, Christmas song, their names, their holy songs, such still not, that is silent night. Oh. 
whole lifetime because it was such a treasurable and memorable time to spend time with quality time with army that to opposite enemy to dear is calling by christmas time next year this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory i know from all that happened today how much both the armies long for peace we shall be together again soon i am sure of it your loving j so here the letter ended at last the last part of the letter the writer said the writer of the letter i name here in after here after as j he said that the by next year christmas this war and everything will be over but this portion that like this much memory that we made good contact and we had friendship with the enemy team will be forever in our memories we will remember it to our lifetime it is like a treasure for us a valuable thing for us the war will be a ter terrible memory but this making friendship between god will be a very memorable worthy memory both the armies they came to know not only we the opposite army is also longing for peace but they have to fight for the peace that is the tragedy now i folded the letter again and slipped it carefully back into its envelope i kept away all night by morning i knew what i had to do i drove into bridport just a few miles away i asked a boy walking his dog where copper bridges was house number 12 turned out to be nothing but a burned out shell the roof gave in the windows boarded up i knocked at the house next door and asked if anyone knew the where the writer he folded the letter properly and slipped it back into its envelope by this time he was also able to know that this letter was a very very precious thing for somebody so he was thinking whole night that what should i now do what should be my uh, next step related to this letter he must have thought whole night that i should give the letter to whom it belongs so for that the address was there so he wanted to reach that place as early as possible so next morning he drove into greenport and the address as the address was written that well copper which is he found out that place it didn't took him much long to found out that place but when he saw that this is the house number 12 copper which is he found out that the house was totally shattered burned it was destroyed by fire now we come to know that why that roll top desk was totally spoiled and damaged not because fire and water both had taken their time on it so uh, whenever we don't we go to anybody house and we did not uh, we are not able to meet that person then we just try to find out by asking the neighbors so he even did the same thing to ask the neighbors so his neighbor uh, he went there and he asked that did anyone know about this uh, somebody called mrs macpherson oh yes said the old man in his slippers he knew her well a lovely old lady he told me a bit muddle headed but at her age she was entitled to be wasn't she a 101 years old lady she had been in the house when it caught fire no one really knew how the fire had started but it could have been candles she used candles rather than electricity because she 
always thought that electricity was expensive, too expensive. The fireman had got her out just in time. She was in nursing home now, he told me. Burlington House on the Dorchester Road, on the other side of the town. So what happened here? That neighbor he told that yes, I know that lady which you are asking for. I know Mrs. Macpherson. She is a good lady, but she is a lovely old lady, but she is a little bit muddle-headed. Muddle-headed means confused lady. Muddle-headed. Muddle-headed means a confused person. Yes. 
She walked me along the corridor. Mrs. McPherson is not in with the others. She told me. She is rather confused today. So we thought it best if she had a good rest. She has no family you know. No one visits. So I am sure she will be only too pleased to see you. She took me into a conservatory with wicker chairs and potted plants all around and left me. So what happened? That matron came. Matron was very happy to see the author. She thought that at last after so many days maybe somebody has come and somebody is there to meet Mrs. McPherson. She will feel very good when she will find that yes, at least somebody has come to meet me. So she guided, she even offered first of all a mince pie to the author. She guided him along the corridor. She came with him and he, she took the author into a conservatory. Conservatory means a building is there with glass roofs and maybe doors and ceilings with full of glass. This one all child. And it had wicker chairs. Wicker chairs means it had chairs made of long thin piece of wood that is used in making the furniture especially. So let me write the vocabulary conservatory. Conservatory means it is a place, it is a building or room or place, room or building with glass roofs, with glass. All over the neck. Or roof. Then comes the next one. Wicker. Wicker is small. Long and Piece of wood. Piece of wood. Specially for furniture. For making furniture. Then the next paragraph. The old lady was sitting in a wheelchair. As we know that she was 101 years old. She was very old. Maybe she was feeling weak. A week this today, Christmas day also, she was feeling like very, very confused. She was muddle-headed. So she was sitting in a wheelchair and her hands folded in her lap. She was just sitting as it is. She had silver white hair pinned into a wispy bun. Wispy. Wispy means very thin and frizzy like wispy. Thin but here it means that her hair turned very very thin and it was made and rolled into a bun on the top like a knot. She had silver white hair pinned into a wispy bun. She was gazing out at the garden. She was looking out to the garden. Hello, I said. She turned and looked at me vacantly. Happy Christmas, Connie. I went on. I found this. I think it's yours. As I was speaking, her eyes never left my face. I opened the tin box and gave it to her. That was the moment her eyes lit up with recognition.
she was looking at the garden then when he said this that Sony old lady she looked at the rider vacantly as if she is not able to listen or not able to understand anything or he is not recognizing the author okay then when he said that happy Christmas and he showed the writer showed that look what I have brought for you what I have found out see this is yours then when he saw that tin box and that letter in it suddenly she felt so happy and her face was glowing suffused her face was totally filled all over with shining and happiness and gleam in the eyes too her eyes lit up with recognition as if he no, as if she knows everything and her face became suffused with a sudden glow of happiness there was happiness all over her face he was explaining the writer explained that yes see this way I got this letter I thought I will be able to give you I wanted to make this letter reach to you but she was not listening anything her only concentration her only life was her only attention and interest was the letter which was brought to her by the author she just very lovingly patted with the fingertips that letter she loved that letter it was like a best Christmas gift she has got she had bought that letter suddenly she reached out and took my hand her eyes were filled with tears you told me you would come home by Christmas dear as she said and here you are the best Christmas present in the world come closer Jim here sit down so here what happened suddenly she reached out and took the hand of the author and her eyes were filled with tears she thought that my husband my dearest husband Jim McPherson has come back to me on this Christmas day so she told that you told me that you will come but you came in a very long time you told me that you will surely come on by Christmas and now you have come you are the best Christmas present for me this is my best Christmas present in the world you come closer Jim dear please sit down you come and please have a seat sit with me you have come after that long time but at least you have come so I am very very happy she told this to the author who wasn't her husband in reality but she thought it so I sat down beside her and she kissed my cheek I read your letter so often Jim every day I wanted to hear your voice in my head it always made me with me and now you are now you are back you can read it to me yourself would you do that for me Jim dear I just want to hear your voice again I would love that so much then perhaps we will have some tea I have made you a nice Christmas cake marzipan all around I know how much you love marzipan so the last and concluding paragraph of the lesson is very very emotional as that lady she finds that she thinks that author who had only come to deliver that letter to give that letter but she thinks that author himself is her long lost husband whom she was waiting for years and years and now she has turned mother headed so she told the author that I read your letter almost of every day I read it often off and on I read this letter but now as you are here you should read this letter for me will you do it for me please I want to 
you to read that letter for me i want to hear your voice again like i am dying to hear your voice you read this letter for me i would love that and then we will have tea together and you know that i have made christmas cake for you this time also and i have made that magic pen which you love the most i know that you love magic pen magic pen word we have already discussed it is like a decorative or icing and decorations we do on the cake it is made up of some eggs cream maybe almond or other things such as to flavor and decorate the cake so in the last i would like to tell that the best christmas present for poni was her long lost husband which came back according to her but we know in reality her husband didn't come back but actually it was the author michael mokogo who came to give her the letter and make her happy so really he made her happy and he gave her the best christmas present in the world with this i end the session